Hi, I'm Veronica. Let's install Pop OS on a Raspberry Pi. Greetings and welcome to another episode of Veronica Explains. I'm Veronica and this is a bit of a different episode. This is a first look, or at least my first look, at Pop OS 21.10 on one of these, the Raspberry Pi 4. Kind of cool. I have been using Pop OS as my primary distro for at least a year. I actually kind of fell in love with how Pop OS is configured. Um, in particular, stacking and tiling totally changed everything about how I work with the desktop. And now at this point, I don't know how I could live without it. Another thing that I actually really like about Pop OS is the vertical workspaces. Some people like it, some people don't, some people don't get it. What I like about it is that for me, vertical workspaces work really well if I'm using multiple monitors. And there are lots of times in which I am using a, a laptop that is docked with a monitor and that set of two monitors kind of spaced out, the vertical workspaces means that it kind of goes woo, 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 and it's a technical term. One of my dreams is at some point being able to use a low power device, uh, possibly an ARM device that is actually capable of being my typical laptop if I'm going out in the field somewhere. Right now I'm bringing a Galgo Pro from System76, which I love, but let's face it, that's a $1,200 laptop. It'd be really nice if I was able to buy something lower spec, lower powered, excellent battery life, but I want that comfortability in the operating system. I'm not gonna use a Chromebook. I'm just not. So anyway, that's the stuff I'm excited to try because if we're able to get it going on a Raspberry Pi, we're not too far from some of these other things and I think it's gonna be amazing. So this is going to be a first look. I actually haven't even downloaded the ISO yet. So this is gonna be experimental. We're gonna see if we can make this work. My Raspberry Pi is just a Raspberry Pi 4 with four gigabytes RAM. I actually featured this Raspberry Pi in a video where I got it working on a terminal or with a terminal and it was a fun video. I got a lot of good feedback on it. It was my first video actually just a few weeks ago. So I'll link it. Am I supposed to point to a card? Is this the card? Is it gonna be right here? Ooh, card. Let's go ahead and try to find this beta. Hey, look, it's the beta. Make it bigger so people can see it. So I found it on GitHub. Jeremy Solar was talking about it on Twitter, and I think he shared a link to this. It does say, this is a beta. Bugs are expected and reinstalls are likely. There be dragons here. Let's try the experimental Raspberry Pi 4 and 400 image. Okay, so I think my download is finished. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert this thing into this thing. Pretty easy. Plugging it in. And what I'm going to need to do is extract the image from the archived file that it shipped in. So I'm going to use the handy dandy archive manager for that. I'm going to do it in the GUI here. So I'm going to click on archive manager, which opens up in a separate window. And here is the Pop OS image. Kind of cool to see. Interesting that it does say Raspberry Pi 3. Raspi 3. Don't know if that means anything. Hopefully it's not a problem. We'll find out. So I'm going to hit extract and I'm just going to move it right into the same downloads folder here. Hit extract. We're just going to let that go and see what happens. Should I play some guitar? Maybe I should play some guitar. This is this is my Epi Dot. It's fun. It's not plugged into anything. Looks like our extraction completed successfully. So now it's time for us to actually, what's the phrase for burn in 2021? Is it rip? Do I need to rip this thing? Why can't
can I remember this term? Image. I need to write the image to the the thing. Don't make me pull out the guitar again. Looks good. So from here, I feel totally comfortable flashing this. It's even in the name. Why can't I remember this? Next, and I'm going to choose that drive I installed. I'm going to hit next, and I'm going to type my super secret password. Now it's doing its thing. Let me just play some more guitar. Anyway, here's Wonderwall. I actually don't know that one. And it looks like we've successfully flashed it. So I think we're ready for the next step, which is to actually try to boot this thing and see what we get. I'm, I'm assuming you've probably already plugged one of these in one of these, but basically there's a slot here. And this goes in it. Let's see if I can get that in there. This is weird. Is it working? Did you get that? I don't have a super fancy lens. That's what you get. And what's happening is you're getting the video feed straight into my capture card. There's no emulation or anything like that getting in the way. It might look fuzzy. I don't know. I've never done this before. This will be interesting. I'm handling the keyboard and mouse with not my favorite keyboard in the world. This is a Logitech something or other. It uses a single dongle thing, so I think that makes it helpful. All that's left it up. Let's see what happens. Now I should note I'm using a pie with a fan. I always recommend people use a pie with a fan, especially in the 4 series because it runs super hot. Oh, this is exciting. I wonder what wallpaper they picked. <gasps> it's, it's the little Bob OS thing. But it's it's on a Raspberry Pi. It's on this thing. That's so cool. Oh, so exciting. I'm going to move it. I'm moving it. Hopefully that helps with fan noise a little bit. Well, let's see how we like it. I'm, I'm going to check this because every now and again we run into an issue where it thinks I'm typing on something I'm not. I've noticed every now and again, especially on Raspbian, I think it's called Raspberry Pi OS now. Um, when I've s configured those, it sees this very American keyboard and for some reason thinks that it, it might be a British keyboard. So like the dollar sign is a pound or, you know, something like that. I don't know. I've never used a British keyboard before. The big thing is that then if I'm typing in a password and the password uses that key, then I'm like totally kittywampus. So just, I like to check. Looks good to me. Okay, we're gonna connect it to my guest Wi-Fi. That's right, I have guest Wi-Fi. Okay, location services. I usually say no. The reason I say no is because I don't want anybody to know my location. Chicago is pretty close. This looks a lot like the regular Pop! OS installer that I'm used to, so yeah, that's exciting. Was that really it? Oh yeah, there we go. Okay, this this looks familiar. So I can definitely see my capture cards doing something goofy here where it's cutting off some of the, the view here. Okay. I'm configuring it on a Raspberry Pi. This is so cool. I love the dock. I'm a big fan of the dock. Not everybody likes the dock, but I'm a huge fan of the dock. I'm mostly keyboard driven, but I like seeing what, what windows I have open. So I am going to use the dock and I'm going to love the dock. I love this feature. I, I absolutely adore this. Um, let's see now when they move it to the right, all the way off to the edge. Here's a thing I'd like to see, and maybe they've configured it at some point. I'll, I'll mess around with it later when I do a full review, but I would love to be able to move these applets to the right of this and then have this remain where it is, where it would be. The reason I love that is because I, I feel like it, it more closely mimics what maybe I used to have on like original Ubuntu from back in the day. And for now, I'm going to leave it in the center because it's what I've gotten used to and I think it's great. We got the launcher. We got the launcher. That's amazing. Okay, so we got gestures. I know for a fact that my 
trackpad is probably not going to work with gestures. And the reason for that is because it sucks. N not, not a good trackpad. Not a good trackpad at all. So that's probably something I'm not going to be able to test right now. But I would say that if this were running on something like a Pinebook Pro, I could see that being super helpful. I don't know that the Pinebook Pro has that this kind of trackpad. I don't personally use it. I, I'm, I'm one of these people. And uh, I, I was born that way. You know, it's just, just the way I was made. I tend to like light mode myself. Part of that is because I'm old. No, honestly, I think some of it is is actually because of my experience with GNOME apps. And this isn't really anybody's fault. It's just a difference of how all these things structure. But I find that when I'm using a light theme, everything tends to look the same from app to app and it's less jarring. When I use a dark theme, every now and again, I get something bright and it's like, whoa, that's bright. I'll probably stick with light mode for now. Let's see how we like it. We're ready to start using Pop! OS. Oh my goodness, this is so cool. Okay, <laughs> this is so exciting. I am so happy to see all Pop! OS on an ARM device. I, I think this is incredible. I want to take a look at some of my favorite features that I use every day on Pop! OS, and I want to see how they work on the Raspberry Pi 4. Now, the features that I want to test in particular are stacking, the window stacking features, tiling, the window tiling features, um, both those I couldn't live without, as well as vertical spaces, which is something that I've really grown accustomed to. I'm anticipating we're going to have it on the mainline Pop! OS, but I'd love to see it on ARM. I also want to see if I can stream some video, and I want to see how Pop Shop works. So let's check it out. So from here, let's start with window stacking. So in Pop, Here's the icon which turns on your tiling and your stacking. And I'm just going to enable that and we're going to open up a couple terminals and just see what happens. Hey, look at that. Hey, look at that. That's pretty good. Now, to me, this looks pretty snappy. Um, you know, I'm on a slight delay because of my uh, because of my video capture card. So, you know, I might be seeing this with a bit of a delay, but but to me this looks really snappy. I love that they use this uh, this algorithm to determine where your where your windows go. I think this is fantastic. I've always loved this in on my desktop. Um, this this is the killer feature to me. I can't live without this tiling and I love that they've incorporated it. Pseudo apt install vim. Let's start there. Yes, go ahead and you know with another one. Let's, let's try top. Now look at that. I'm guessing I don't have HTOP or NeoFetch yet. So I'm just going to vim all the way down because I'm a big fan of that vim. Not bad. I mean, check out these numbers. I think this is pretty reasonable considering this is a low spec device. Granted, I'm not doing anything other than vim. But this is amazing. So if you've never seen how the tiling works in Pop! OS, it's, it's really incredible. So with the Windows key, I can, or the Super key, it says it's got Windows on it. Um, but with the Super key, I can actually navigate between my windows, which I think is neat. Uh, standard windows also apply. So, you know, I can do, you know, the, the regular alt tab toggle, but I, I have totally given that up in favor of the windows key or super key. Um, it's really, it's hard to have it to break. I still call it the open Apple key on my Mac too, but now let's try stacking. So I'm going to create a new stack here. So when the super key S starts a stack in Pop! OS. And what's great about this is that you can actually run several windows concurrently in the same space on, on your workspace. So in this case here, you can see by the VKC at Pop! OS, I've got a stack built here. Now I'm gonna open up a second terminal right in there. And you can see it automatically stacked the other terminal that I had up behind it, which is neat. So now here, if I wanted to vim, 
then I could go back. So watch this Windows key and then to the left and it goes back to my other, other window that I had up, which is amazing. So here I could, I'm gonna install NeoFetch because why not? I got my top open, I can see it's looking pretty good. That's super reasonable for, you know, for a Raspberry Pi. Now I will say I have used, um, I've used Ubuntu Mate on the Raspberry Pi as a desktop replacement and it's pretty good. This is giving it a run for its money, to be perfectly honest with you. I think this is pretty fun. And this is the beta. All right, let's try out Neo Fetch. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> That's Pop OS on a Raspberry Pi. Ugh, that's me. I, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a picture of that. I'm just gonna tweet this out. Don't mind me. Both stacking and tiling are working just fine. So now it's time to check the next thing on my list, which I had to look at it, vertical workspaces. Again, I love vertical workspaces. I know it's not for everybody. That's cool. You can have what you like. I like vertical workspaces. Let's see how it works here. So in order to trigger my vertical workspaces, usually I have to control super and then up and down. Let's see how it works. It just works. It's just there. It's just there and it's on a Raspberry Pi. This is incredible. So this is, in my mind, this, this combination of things is absolutely the killer feature of the, of Pop OS because, and special, specifically what they're doing with Cosmic, because here I can have my windows configured in a specific way with a specific tiling layout, and then I can switch desktops or switch workspaces to another place where then I can fill this with all kinds of nonsense. I mean, so I can have one workspace like that, another workspace like that. And because it's dynamic workspaces, it automatically creates a new one where I can load my browser. Now I loaded Firefox, felt a little sluggish. Firefox always feels sluggish on, on ARM for me, every time, doesn't matter. I'm still gonna use it because I like Firefox more than Chromium at this point. So yeah, our, our memory is still, I mean, it's doing okay. We were down a little bit, but I think we're doing fine. I'm gonna close some of these um, super key queue to close. That's all fine. And then that, that workspace that we created disappears automatically because it's dynamic and dynamic is awesome. So let's try out some video. I'm gonna just simply go to youtube.com and let's check out a video. So it takes a minute. Firefox on Raspberry Pi is always pretty slow in my experience. Now, I don't want to use another browser because frankly, I don't like the duopoly of Google and Apple doing everything on the web. And let's try. Let's just see how it looks. Let's, let's see if this works out okay. Picture, if you will, it's the early to it's me. Now it's defaulting to 720. Should we try 1080? Are you waiting for a marvel of virtual reality? <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Did you think we were going to talk about Doom? No, let's talk about Mega Rays. So it looks a little choppy. But I think that's to be expected for anything on a Raspberry Pi. I, I better shut myself off. Quiet, Veronica. It's a little bit choppy, but I think honestly that's to be expected from anything on Firefox and a Raspberry Pi. Um, that I don't think that's that unusual compared with like Ubuntu Mate or Raspbian on the Pi. I, this is about par for the course for what I've seen. Okay, so the last thing that I wanna test here is the pop shop. And let's do our system updates through the pop shop. Let's see how this works. Fail to fetch updates. Oh boy, that's new. You know, some of this might be because I did an apt. It's it's yelling about being offline. Let's try again. Just just do it again. Just, just do it again. Nope. 
It's not happy. It doesn't like it. Why, that there looks like a bug. So I'm going to open up a terminal. Let's try it. I don't think I've done update and upgrade yet. So let's try that out real quick. So this is updating. Maybe I should play a little bit more guitar. I would turn on my amp. I have an amp under the desk, but I'm afraid that if I turn it on, it might like blow out this, the microphone or anything because it's a Fender Hot Rod Deluxe and these things aren't quiet. You know what? I'm gonna go grab my acoustic. Let's have some fun. While we're doing an update, I'll play a little something. It'll be fine. You'll survive. So I will say this has been quite a long update. Um, not atypical for a Raspberry Pi. Atypical for Pop! OS though. But I don't know that that's a bad thing. I'm willing to bet that, you know, this is something that might be more related to the hardware of the Raspberry Pi than anything on the Pop! OS side, because this, the, the amount of time it's taking for all these updates to go through, totally what I expect out of Ubuntu Mate, out of uh, mainline Ubuntu, out of even Raspbian. Um, so we're, you know, we're about where I expect to be. And it's done. Okay. I should have tracked that. I, I'll eventually figure out how much time it is and maybe say something below, but I mean, that, that was pretty typical for what I've seen on any sort of Raspberry Pi running an actual desktop. Okay. So with that, I'm going to see if Pop Shop opens. And if it doesn't, we'll do a restart and see if Pop Shop works just fine. Nope. Doesn't like it. It seems to think it's offline. Should try to install a program. Let's do Meld. Meld is a good program. I like Meld. Nope. It is not happy with me. So Pop Shop doesn't seem to be working right now. I'm going to reboot. We'll see if we can get it working. Okay, we are back. I have rebooted. Let's take a look and see if Pop Shop is working now. If not, that's okay. It's beta. This is what happens. Moment of truth. Let's see if Pop Shop's working now. Okay, so it seems like we're in. I want to try installing some software. Let's try Inkscape. So I'm going to get Inkscape. It's a great gra vector graphics editor. I can see it right here. Now I want to see, do they have the flat pack? They do have the flat pack. So I'm going to try installing the flat pack. Let's just see how this works out. Um, if you used Inkscape some years ago and it wasn't for you, it's worth checking it out again. They've made a lot of usability changes over the last year and or over the last several years. And I, I, it's wonderful. Oh, aborted due to failure while pulling the runtime. Minimum free space size of 500 meg. That's weird. I'm, I don't think we're anywhere close to running out of space. Let's find out. You know, actually we might be. Did it not expand? So looking here, you know, I, I'm not totally sure, but it sure looks to me like 
the partition didn't expand automatically the way that I'm used to on a typical Raspberry Pi. Now, usually when I boot up a Raspberry Pi for the first time, the SD card keeps its partition small for the first boot, and then on reboot, it resizes it to take up the rest of the space. It doesn't look like it did that here. I mean, it's been a bit since I've ever had to think about that. I, I don't know quite what to do there. Um, I could look it up, but honestly, this video is gonna get kind of long and it's not a full tutorial. So I think I'm just gonna let that go and we're gonna wrap this thing up here. So with this, I think I'm ready to wrap up my review here, my first look at Pop! OS on ARM. It's, it's, it's truly stellar. It's, it's amazing to see this. Now, this is just a first look. It's kind of like an unboxing video. I, I haven't done a whole lot of digging and poking and prodding at this. You saw me install it in real time. And this is what I think of is would be a fairly accurate representation of what your experience would be like if you did exactly what I did and downloaded the files, configured it up and, and got started. It's cool to see Pop! OS on a Raspberry Pi. I think that's super neat. I think that's worth celebrating. The things that I checked, the things that I tested that worked great were stacking, tiling, and the vertical workspaces that are dynamic. That was amazing. That worked exactly as I would expect. Felt snappy as I was using it. I, I, think, I think that felt pretty good. The video and audio was about what you'd expect on a Raspberry Pi. The, the Raspberry Pi isn't a video or audio powerhouse, and it's, it's not gonna be, at least not this iteration of it. This is a low spec machine that I've often deployed as a replacement for like a thin client, where I just need somebody to be able to get on the internet or even access a terminal app, something that needs to print. Um, that's what a Raspberry Pi is really for in terms of the desktop space. This does it, and this does it very well. Pop Shop seems, you know, at least from this just first glance, a little buggy. I bet I could troubleshoot some of this stuff and, you know, get back to folks. But I will say a couple of the things that I noticed that, you know, might give you pause if you're thinking, I'm just gonna dive into this as my main machine here. It's a bit slow because it's a Raspberry Pi. I don't think that's Pop. I don't think that's System76. It's a Raspberry Pi. It is so low spec. Um, make sure you run it with a fan uh, or some kind of fancy heat sink because otherwise this thing's gonna become so hot it's unusable. And then the last thing, I just, I'm so excited for what Pop! OS on ARM could mean. I don't know if an ARM-based laptop is part of their vision. I hope it is. And one of the reasons for that is that I think getting some better power management tools in the Linux ecosystem is, is would be amazing. Getting low spec machines running mainline Linux is something that to me is really important. I think if we really wanna get average folks going in Linux, what we need is affordable ARM-based products with excellent operating systems. That's where I see this going. I mean, I am imagining maybe the Pi 400 could be somebody's primary machine. In I mean, in theory, that might be doable. The Pi 4 is a bit throttly, but it's still pretty good. And I'm betting it's only gonna get better because the folks at System76 care about this. They care about you. They care about all of us and they care about Linux. And of course they do because Linux is awesome. And so are you.